So today, Resurrection Sunday, it's not about the bunny today. It's not about chocolate today. It's not about the bunny that lays eggs. You know, it's not about Ishtar. If you guys know the background story of, you know, Ishtar and, and Nimrod, and then, you know, Nimrod being Noah's great-great-grandson, and, you know, and then the pagans said, okay, Nimrod and Ishtar, and then Nimrod dies and becomes a god, and they call him Baal. Everybody heard the name Baal before? Yeah. Right? So they call him Baal, and then Baal, you know, sends his ray of light to his wife and gets his wife pregnant, and then she has a kid, and then they have a family, and then she dies. Ishtar dies, and Ishtar goes to be with her husband, right? Baal. And Baal says, no, I don't want you up here. Go back to earth. And he sends her back to earth in an egg. So she lands on earth in an egg, and the egg cracks. She comes out of the egg, and then the first person she sees, she turns into a bunny. And that's, and that's why you hear, you know, people out there trying to take away what God did and try to replace it with the bunny and the egg and all these things. Look at Christmas. Christmas, right? Christmas is about who? Well, is Santa Claus in the Bible? <laughs> you know, uh, reindeer in the Bible, snowman, all that. You know, but, but this is what happens. A lot of people in this world, they try to take away from the true meaning of things. So today we must all know and educate ourselves in these type of things. You know, today is resurrection. Yes, Easter is in the Bible. It's biblical. Go look, look it up. I think it's on Acts 12.1. It's in there. So, you know, today is not about, you know, fighting the people to say, oh, no, Easter is a pagan holiday. Easter is in the Bible. It's, it's the Passover. They refer to it as Easter. You know, prior to the King James Bible being written in the 1600s, there was a Bible called the Tinsdale Bible. Tinsdale Bible used the word Easter 20 times in there in, in, in that scripture. So, you know, let, let's just not get things confused. Let's just really understand and be vigilant and know what, 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 what is it that we're doing. You know, like I said, I, I'm a fan of education. I'm a, I'm a person that will probably never, ever stop learning because I just find it intriguing. I love, how, I, I love knowing how things work. I love knowing, you know, what makes things go you know, I like, I like knowing about what powers things up, what's, what's the engine that's pushing it. So in Christianity, we need to be the same. We need to know. We need to dig deep, you know. And that way, when you dig deep, you'll be standing solid and firm. So when somebody comes up to you and tells you something like, hey, there's a mother God in the Bible. Mind you, somebody came up to me and told me that a few weeks back. My wife and I, were, we were walking in the mall. And the guy comes up. He's like, did you know that there is a mother God? And I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you saying? Oh, but who's the bride? And look what it says in Revelations. And I'm like, but, you know, we know that God is a jealous God. There is no other God but God. You know, Scripture says this. So if this person is coming up to you telling you something totally odd, I'm like, wait a minute. So you're telling me that God contradicts himself? God doesn't do that. His word is perfect. His word is perfect. He does not do that. But we need to remain grounded and we need to know. We need to educate ourselves. So that way, hey, the Bible says, right, due to the lack of knowledge, my people shall perish. So, you know, let's just be vigilant. But, you know, today's special. You know, it's special because, you know, when we were doing worship, God is just touching me and he's telling me the resurrection, the resurrection, the resurrection is about power. The resurrection is about that power that, I've, that I'm giving you upon conquering death. You know, something that we all got freely given. Over 2,000 years ago, the, 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 this event happened that the world acknowledges it. You see, why, why, what year are we in? 2016. Why that number? The, 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 world, the world acknowledges it. The, the world knows. The world knows. The world acknowledges the, 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 the death of Christ. They acknowledge it. The atheists acknowledge it. The Muslims acknowledge it. That's, the world acknowledges it, and they know. A lot of them don't believe in the resurrection, though. I, I want to hear, hear about other, other beliefs and, and them having a, a God that, that resurrected. No, nobody else did that. But Jesus, Son of God, he did that. He conquered death. Amen? So what I'm going to talk to you guys this morning about, 
I don't know if you're able to see this. Can you go, can everybody see this? Greek word. Anybody here read Greek? <laughs> so, if everybody could open up their Bibles to John 19. We're going to do some reading today. John 19, verse 17. That's where we'll start. And just to give a quick recap of what's happening here in this part of the scripture, you know, Jesus had already been betrayed. You know, he was already in custody, right? He had gone to the governor. God, governor, sent him to Herod. Herod sent him back to the governor. Nobody could find any, any, any good reason to say this man is guilty. You know, they brought Barabbas, right? And they said, hey, Barabbas or Jesus? They said, let Barabbas go. We want Jesus dead, you know? And so this, this, is, this, this is where we're at right now. So if we just start going into verse, let's start at verse 16. I'll be reading it out of the King James Version today. So the word says on verse 16, Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing the cross, cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, one on either side and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, so it was nearby. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. You see, Pilate knew something already. He knew something already. You know, his wife knew something already. He's like, wait a minute. No, this is, this is this something about this man here. I'm washing my hands. You see, I think in the book of Matthew, it actually writes and describes, you know, him washing his hands before the people. Because saying, listen, I'm washing my hands from this. His blood is on your hands. Because he knew. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart. And also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top, from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it. But cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled. With said, they parted my raiment among them, for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary of the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was a set now, there was a set vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it on hyssop. And it's crazy how God works because hyssop, you know, it's like a cleansing plant, and, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So that, that, that's the part that we're going to emphasize and talk about today. His last words on the cross were, it is finished. As we know, the New Testament, when it was written, it was written in Greek. So the Greek word for it is finished is tetelestai, which is that word that you're seeing up there. So tetelestai is it is finished. So today's, today's message is titled tetelestai. It is finished. And we're going to talk about what was finished. So what we're going to cover, what is tetelestai? We're going to talk about what was the payment. We're going to talk about proof of the payment. And then we're going to talk about what happens when the debt collectors come. 
So we're, just, so we're just, just going right into it. To telestai means it is finished. It is the term written in business documents or receipts in New Testament times. So in New Testament times, whenever you bought something, you received a receipt, and the receipt said to telestai on it. You know, you, you went to dinner, and your receipt said paid to telestai. You know, whenever there was somebody in jail, incarcerated at those times, they would lock them up, put them in, you know, wherever, and they'll put a sign outside that says his offense. This person stole, this person did this, this person did that. And when the person had served their time, they were right to tell us on the paper and said, okay, this person has paid their debt. You know, it's a term that was used by builders, the architects and the engineers. They'll go, they'll build, they'll get these projects done and they'll put up a building and they'll say, to tell us it's finished. You know, or, or our artists might be painting a mural or doing, working on a painting, and, and they, they put the last bit of, bit of ink there and they say, to tell us that. It is finished. You know, the priests will go in and they will do sacrifices on the Day of Atonement, and they'll say, to tell us that. It's done. You guys, are, you guys are forgiven for the next year. Servants to their masters. The masters will send their servants to go do something. And, hey, servant, go do this. And they'll come back and say, to tell us that. It's done. Accountants. You know, they, whenever they were using, using that term and somebody had debt and it was paid off, a document stamp says to tell us that it's been paid off. Warriors used it in war. They will go to war and when they defeat their enemy, they'll say to tell us that it is finished. It's a term. It's a term. I'm not saying I gave up. It's a term saying it's done. It's accomplished. And what's accomplished? What work is accomplished? Well, what did the Lord Jesus Christ come here to do? You see, those words, the last words that he spoke, when he mentioned, when he mentioned to Telestai, it, it was a word of accomplishment. It was saying, you know what? I'm done. Everything here is completed. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You see, he started the work, and Jesus finished it. So that's why, that's why we go back to verses 28, when, when the word says, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. What was accomplished? Every single prophecy that was ever brought up about Jesus Christ was accomplished. Now, just to put it in perspective, whenever you get a prophecy, it's going to be like, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while before you see them come to fruition. But with Jesus, everything happened as it should have happened, down to the very end. So when he says that the scriptures might be fulfilled, what scriptures was he talking about? The word in Psalm 69, 21 says, they gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. After he had drank the vinegar... Mind you, Psalms, that's a long time. That's way before Jesus. But it's incredible how, how God is just so perfect and so detailed in the things that he does, you know. And, 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 and we see that, you know. So he said, it is finished. And just to prove again how perfect God's will was and how perfect just he is, there's a scripture on Psalm, Psalm 34, 20 that says, another prophecy, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. So now we're going back to John, and let's go to verse 32, John 19, verse 32, and the word says, then came the soldiers and break, so actually bring it back to 31. So it was tradition. This is, this is right before, right before the, this is during Passover, right? So they were getting ready. They were getting ready because the next day was considered a Sabbath, right? That Sabbath was followed by the festival of unleavened bread, which is also part of the Passover, and then it led to their regular Sabbath on Saturday. So, on verse 31, it says, The Jews, therefore, therefore, because it was the preparation, it was the preparation of the Sabbath, that bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Besought Pilate that their legs be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers... Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with them. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. 
once again, there is God proving himself one more time. He's telling you, look, this is what I spoke long before. This is, this is what's, what's happening. So even after death, he was still fulfilling the prophecies. That's the God that I serve. So he came to do the work. You see, back, back in Old Testament times, you had, to, you had to sacrifice for everything. Go through the book of Leviticus. Go to Leviticus and see how many different sacrifices you had to make. You know, and, and, and how women sometimes had to camp outside of their homes for a week, you know, while they were going through at a certain time. You know, where they couldn't be at home. So up until this point, that, that was the method, you know. That was the method. And as we all know, the wages of sin is what? So if the wages of sin is death, and we're sinners, then where are we all heading to? It's, it's tough, right? Because the only way to pay back that debt of sin is to be perfect. How many, how many here are perfect? Since the first sin that you committed, you're in debt. And, and, and only perfection could get you off that debt. Only perfection. Who came into this world was perfect for 33 years. So that's what the telestat means. It's, it is finished. But it's not a give up, I'm, fin I'm finished, I'm giving up. You see, a, a lot of people are fascinated by the last words that people say on their deathbed. You know, when, when, when somebody, somebody's like just basically checking out and they want to say, oh, their last words were this or the last words were that. Paul, I fought the good fight. I'm ready to go. Jesus' last words were, it's accomplished. This is the beginning. Amen? Have you ever had debt that you couldn't get away from? Anybody? Student loans, mortgages, right? Some people refinance their mortgages because they're like, man, I can't, I can't do it. You know, you're like, dang, this, 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 this thing is just, this debt is just following me everywhere I go. I move over there, it's following me there. I'm going there, it's following me there, you know, and, and, and so, so in our situation, us being sinners and knowing that the wages of sin is death, we have a situation at hand. So what was the payment? The payment was the death of Christ. You see, last Sunday, a lot of people celebrated a certain date. Anybody, anybody knows what last Sunday was? Palm Sunday. So Palm Sunday was the day where Jesus came to Jerusalem, and the people said, Lord, the Lord is here. They took these palm leaves and put them down on the ground, and they took their coats up and put it down on the ground, and here Jesus came on a donkey. All right, so that, that's the, the commemoration of Palm Sunday. But what would happen is prior to the Day of Atonement in old times, a lamb will be presented, and it needed to be without blemish. And, and, and that lamb that was presented was sacrifice. So here we are on Palm Sunday, and the lamp is being presented before the congregation of the people. Jesus is coming. So if sin is our bill, and we cannot repay our debt of sin, who could pick it up for us? Only God. Only God can pick up that charge. The only way to pay the bill was to be perfect. So here, so, 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 so now we have a problem here because God is the only one that could pick up this bill. They could pick up our debt. Right? Follow me? God is the only one. But God is a spirit. So now like, okay, so, so what needs to happen here? God needed to become man and come walk on this earth and be the sacrifice that covered our debt. Amen? For the 33 years, Jesus did not, did not do anything that did not please God. Everything he did pleased God. So therefore, he, his perfection, his perfection is what, is what covers us. You see, he was the lamb that was sacrificed. And all you needed was once, once and for all, we were done. Isn't it interesting how 
the devil thought that he had Jesus? Isn't it interesting how, how the devil said, I got him this time. I'm going to turn his people against him. I'm going to set him up. Have you guys ever been in a situation where everything just kind of fell apart right before your eyes and you thought that you had friends and you thought that you had people and next thing you know, everybody turns their back on you and then it backfires on them somehow, some way? Because your God has your back? Because your God is the one that takes care of you? Because your God is the Lord of hosts? So the devil thought he had one up on God. He said, I'm going to take him out. Not realizing what he did was just kind of enable his sentence for life. You see, because once Jesus died, it was over for him. Up until that point, he was still stronghold in the world. But once Jesus went, it was over. His, 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 he's still around. But we, due to that resurrection, we have the power and authority over him. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, he had to take in all our sin. And when he took it, he died in sin. So what happens? He went to hell. He went to hell. So... While the world was at rest with Sabbath and then festival of unleavened bread and then Sabbath again, Jesus was working. He said, don't worry about it. Salvation, that's free. You don't have to do anything for it. You accept them and you got it. Amen? You accept it and you got it. It's just so awesome, once again, how everything kind of lined up perfectly in that one year and you had those three days where there was nothing happening. He said, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Give me your burdens. Give me all your pain. Give them to me. I'll take care of it. All we got to do is accept them. Amen? Amen? So now we know that that was the payment. So when you go out to a restaurant and you have a good meal somewhere, and you're, you know, you're done, you had your dessert, you had your tres leches, you had your, you know, you, you had your flan. You had, you had all this good stuff. And then, you know, you got the check, right? So you pay your bill. And then the person comes for, you know, what, they give you, like, two receipts? They're like, hey, this is my copy and this is your copy. So where is that, where is that proof that God, that Jesus paid our, our debt, that Jesus paid our bill? What's the proof? The proof is in the resurrection, And just to show you, we're going to cover the four Gospels real quick. Matthew, chapter 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the, and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was as white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as the dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, fear not, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Mark 16. Once again. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Sal 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 Salmon, Salom had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning on the first day of the week. What day was it? The first day of the week. The first day of the week. So Sunday, Sunday is the first day. So first day of the week, they came up to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. So on Sunday morning, they went. And they said amongst themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, be not affrighted. 
Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified? He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they lay him, but go your way. Tell his disciples, Peter, that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. He told them. He told them. Some of them didn't know the scriptures. Because once again, that was prophesied as well. Luke 24. Now upon the first day of the week. What day? You see, I believe, I believe God sent his son to this earth. He sent them to die for our sins. He took up our sins on that cross, cross and then he, they, 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 then he resurrected. He conquered death. He overcame death. When did this happen? Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found a stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in, and found not only the body of the Lord Jesus, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. The so two angels showed up there. And they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth and said unto them, why seek, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And then they remember his words. And lastly, John 20. On the first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene early. What day? The first day of the week, when it was yet dark into the sepulcher and sees the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Therefore, Mary's like, Oh my God, they took him. Peter therefore went forth, that the other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. So Peter was a little bit slow, as we see. And stooping down and looking, saw the linen clothes lying, and yet he did not go in. So now he goes there, he sees that, and instead of the, the stone is off, and he looks in, and he just sees his clothes. That's like seeing somebody who just you buried a couple of days ago, and you go in there, you go in there, and you open up their casket, and all of a sudden you just see a suit there, and you see the suit buttoned up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and, and, and then if you bury the person with a bandana on, and you see the bandana, they're still tied. <laughs> it's like the person just got up and got, you know, and didn't even like, they just got right out of their clothes and, but it was there. And stooping down, looking in, he saw the linen clothes lying, yet he, went, he didn't go in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seized the linen cloth lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. So we see it in all four Gospels, right, four. He arose on the first day of the week. After that, the saints started gathering on the first day of the week. There's a lot of biblical backups that back that up. So that's the reason why we congregate together on Sundays. To remember and celebrate that he resurrected on Sunday. So here the disciples are, and they're going back and telling everybody. And good old Thomas, you know, they called him Doubting Thomas. And Thomas is like, I don't believe you. You guys are lying. I want to see him, and when I see him, I want to touch his hands, and I want to touch the wounds, and I want to touch his side, and then I'll believe. So Jesus appeared to them eight days later. He shows up amongst them. Hey, Thomas. Come here. Come here. Look at my hands. Come here. Thomas, come here. Come here and touch him. And at that point, Thomas believed. 
How many times has Jesus not shown himself to us and says, come here. Why are you running from me for? Then he appears to them again. And he says, I'm hungry. Do you have any meat? So now he knows, and I'm going to prove it to you that I'm alive. And it's a bodily resurrection. You see, that's the biggest difference between a lot of other religions out there. They believe in Jesus. They acknowledge Jesus. But the resurrection, they just say, nah. Or if not, they'll say, oh, just the spirit, not the body. So here's the Lord coming over and says, I'm hungry. You have any food? How about, how about, do you have any rice and beans? <laughs> Some chuletas? And he ate. He ate. It's in there. So he was doing all these things to show him, look, I'm alive. It's a bodily resurrection. Amen? Amen? I'm alive. He showed up in front of 500 people. Now I'll ask you this. How many people are history people here? How many, how many people know about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln? We all learned it, right? How did we know about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln? You read it. From what? From a historical account, right? Well, the Bible is the ultimate historical account. You see, because if we believe about Booth and how Booth killed Lincoln, it's the same exact thing. Over 500 people saw the Lord resurrected and alive and well. That was the proof of payment. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 8. I'm going to prove it to you one more time. The word says, For I delivered unto you first of all, which also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. After that, he was seen above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present. But some are falling asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. So Paul was the last one that saw him. But there were hundreds of people that saw him. That's the proof of payment. You see, the devil thought he had him. How, how many times have you been in situations where you're like, man, this is impossible? Man, how am I going to get out of this one? How am I, what am I supposed to do now? And the Lord is like, come here. Come here. I'm like, I'm like don't you see? You already won this. This is ours. This is our victory. It's a telestai. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. So, Jesus came to destroy the work of the devil. That was what the Telestai was about. I'm destroying the work of the devil. Thanks for joining the NBMI experience today. Like, comment, and subscribe at www.facebook.com front slash NBMINY or our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com front slash N-B-M-I-C-H-U-R-C-H. Also check out our new and improved website at www.newbeginningschurches.com. And finally, check out our new awesome church app, available on both Android and Apple platforms. Search your app store for N-B-M-I-C-H-U-R-C-H and be blessed.